Hi everyone and welcome to this special two-parter featuring gluten-free Neapolitan pizza and gluten-free homemade Hot Pockets. You're gonna love it. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is make our pizza dough. My pizza dough recipe will be up on the website. Uh, basically, it's two packets of active dry yeast, some sparkling water, uh, 600 grams of gluten-free bread flour, and grams are important here because you need an exact amount. Uh, everybody's cups, half cups, and everything are totally different, so just please measure it. You can see I'm using my thermometer there. All right, unit guys basically know the drill. We've done dough here a few times. We just get everything together. Uh, oh, and some olive oil, some salt, and a little bit of honey for the uh, yeast to feed on. If you don't like honey, don't use it. You just need some kind of sugar for the yeast to eat. Okay. Oh, and we're not putting any baking powder in this. That's a little extra xanthan gum just to hold everything together. All right, so let's bring out our stand mixer. There we go. And you guys know the drill here, so I'm just going to kind of speed through this. Our flour goes in on top of our active yeast culture there, a little bit of water, and that's our pre-dough. Now I've just got a couple of scoops, make sure everything comes together, and leave it for a couple of minutes until we're ready to mix everything con concurrently. So now we put in the rest of our flour mix our olive oil, our salt, as we're mixing the dough together. Here's the drill, put the, put the water in, and beat it with the paddle attachment until it's pebbly, take the paddle attachment off, clean it with a fix a dough hook, and then beat it for 15 minutes. All right, enjoy the spinning machine. Okay, and like I said in the voiceover, this dough is done. It's been about 15 minutes that we've been kneading this. Now I'm gonna show you something. With gluten-free dough, you may notice sometimes that it's really, really thin. All right, there's a reason for that. This is gonna look like, when you take it out of this bowl here, it's going to resemble a thick cake batter. And that's really, really good because in order for gluten-free dough to rise properly, it needs to be thin and light. The only way you're gonna be able to get the consistency you're looking for out of the finished product is for it to be not almost completely formed, all right? Remember when we did fish and chips, how we had a batter that was very light and fluffy? Well, as this rests, we're gonna put it in a well-oiled bowl here for about two hours until it all more than doubles in size. And then we're just gonna work with it until it's ready to go. So I'm gonna scrape this out. My tiny spatula here. You notice it's going to pour out pretty well. You see how it's not sticking at all? If you wait for this to come together to a hard dough ball in your mixer, it's not going to turn out right. Okay, it just, it just won't. So, let me get the oil here. And there we go. Okay. So, a little bit of olive oil in the bowl. Get it nice and coated. Up the sides, just like that. And now we're just going to pour, literally pour this in. Okay. So we have a ring doorbell system, <laughs> and. Uh, that little no noise you heard there was out back. Our dog's walking in the back. Okay, this is out. Now we're just gonna leave this alone. Fold it in itself like this. Okay, see how I'm folding there? You don't wanna take too much of the gas out. Now we've got yeast in here, but notice I didn't put any baking powder in this at all. And that's because of the carbonation that I'm from the sparkling water. It's going to take care of that for us, and this doesn't need to rise or be super puffy like our uh, fish batter was, so it doesn't need two sources of oil. Plus, the yeast will take care of the rest of it. Okay, I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap tightly, throw a towel over it, and I'll see you in about two hours. All right, it's two hours later, and we have turned our dough out here, and I'm just going to start working with it on this parchment paper. And the reason I'm using this is that it is non-stick. 
um, and it won't stick to this high hydration dough. I've added about another 100 grams worth of flour because for whatever reason, uh, just because of whatever, you know, if it's humid uh, today, it's sucking up a lot less water than normal, so it's staying unusually wet. So you just need to adjust that from time to time. So I'm gonna section it off here, cut it in half, put it into balls, and then get them into a baking dish, cover it with some plastic wrap and a towel, and let it rise for eight hours or overnight at minimum. You can let it rise longer than that, uh, but minimum overnight rise. All right, I will see you soon as we buzz through the rest of this. It is the next day and we are ready to turn our dough into pizza. So we're gonna get started here. I've got that piece of parchment paper that I'm gonna put this on to work with and roll it flat and cut it into shape so I can put that parchment directly on my pizza peel because we have to par bake this uh, gluten-free dough, kind of like blind breaking a pie crust in order to make it pliable and so it doesn't fall apart on us. Uh, and how we do that is sticking it into a 425 degree oven for about two minutes just to set the crust. All right, I'm gonna buzz through this and I'll be back with you momentarily. We're gonna take our pizza peel, stick it in our oven and par bake it for two minutes. Well, two to three. All right, so that crust, can see is now just set and that's what we want we just want this just set so we can take it off of here and work with it and it doesn't come apart all right so we're gonna let that cool down all right so this guy's cool enough for us to top now here's what we're gonna do all right, so I'm gonna speed through topping this. Uh, traditionally, Neapolitan pizza just uses crushed San Marzano tomatoes, and I have a uh, Passata Rustica here from Delalo's, which is really, really good, and it's just crushed San Marzano's. Um, fresh mozzarella cheese, we're gonna tear some up. You can see Gracie's very eager back there. Um, and then we're gonna put on uh, some something that's not traditional at all, uh, which is Romano cheese, after I put some basil on here. I like the bite of Romano cheese, but you don't have to do that, and by all means, it is not traditional. A little bit of olive oil on top and some salt and pepper, and that's it. That's all we're going to do to this, and it's ready to go outside. So I will see you at the grill. Okay, that's what we call perfection. Now you'll notice it doesn't have the little black bits on the top, but that's fine. We can always blow torch those later, but look at that bottom crust. Crispy, delicious, fluffy and light, really easy to work with. See that? Look at that, beautiful. Now it's not like a cracker or a tortilla. All right, let's cook this cool down and I'm gonna eat. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Here is our final product. And it looks delicious and I'm gonna eat it and I'm gonna eat it all. Um, I will post some pictures of me enjoying this, but I'm probably gonna have to wait for my wife to come home to eat this guy, but I will film it later. All right, you have yourselves a wonderful day. Right, so I couldn't wait anymore. <laughs> so uh, this is just, look at this, okay? It's not a cracker, it's light, it's fluffy. Mm, mm, God. Mm. This is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Delicious. Perfect. Please try this one out and you have yourselves a wonderful day.